Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Cambisser, and I'm the founder and director of the Next Society. And I'm grateful to share our work focused on understanding the long-term outcomes and life impacts of NEC. I do not have any conflicts to disclose. This project got started at the 2019 NEC Symposium in Ann Arbor. Um, thanks to support from PCORI, we were able to have adult NEC survivors join and participate in the meeting. And throughout the conference, um, the NEC survivors in attendance shared their stories and their experience growing up and living with complications of NEC. Um, they expressed feelings of isolation and being disregarded and doubted. And so the NEC Society wanted to help um, validate and elevate their experience. Um, so I just want to share a powerful quote from uh, one of the next survivors who attended the next symposium, um, the long-term effects of neck are often delegitimized, which harms my ability to access what I need for my health. Not every next survivor meets the SBS criteria. And so we are left with something that's treated like it doesn't exist. So just to provide a bit more insight, we launched this project because neck is a life altering diagnosis and there's very little understanding of how neck affects patients and their families years later. So we set out to capture the experience of children and adults who survived neck as infants. And we also wanted to understand if and how neck affects quality of life or the parent's health. And really we wanted to help um, validate the patient family experience. So after the next symposium, we brought together parents whose children live with long-term neck complications, as well as adult neck survivors. And together, we worked in partnership with our team of researchers and our clinicians to develop um, the questions and the outline for two surveys that I then entered into Qualtrics. Um, one survey was for parents of children under the age of 18 who had been diagnosed with neck as infants. And the other survey was for neck survivors over the age of 18. Um, once the two surveys were approved by UCSF's IRB, we shared the links on the Next Society's website, listserv, uh, social media pages, uh, the Next Society's partners in Brazil, um, the United Kingdom, and Australia also shared the survey links with their um, community. And we kept the survey open, uh, the surveys open for eight weeks uh, from September through October of 2020. Uh, we do not have a response rate, unfortunately, because the surveys were open to anyone affected by NAC and they were shared widely. Um, the responses were anonymous and each respondent completed uh, just one survey with 26 questions. Um, and as you can see from the graphic here, um, we had international participation, but most of our respondents uh, were from the U.S. So the 28 next survivor respondents were mostly white from North America um, with a median age of 31, and most had been born prematurely and experienced surgical neck. So here is a really compelling quote from one of our next survivor respondents. Um, Every time I see a doctor, I have to educate them about neck. Half the time, they don't believe that long-term complications exist. They don't believe me, let alone understand me. Moving on to what we found from our survivor survey, 89% of our survivors reported that they have long-term complications from neck. 80% reported um, feeling insecure and anxious about their body with one respondent sharing, um, I've always felt deformed due to the surgical scars from neck. 83% reported having to explain neck to others in order to advocate for themselves in various settings with one sharing, I have to explain neck to every teacher, every healthcare provider, anyone who serves as a gatekeeper for accessing what I need to take care of myself. So 96% of our survivor respondents reported that they have not had any healthcare providers talk to them about the long-term effects of neck. Uh, one respondent shared, my family doctor just sort of ignores neck. They say, that's when I was a baby and it has nothing to do with now. 92% of our survivor respondents um, reported not having enough information about neck and its long-term complications with one sharing. I have to explain neck to healthcare providers, to teachers, and so on all the time, but I don't know enough myself. So 60% of our neck survivors reported that neck has affected their overall quality of life with one sharing. Neck has impacted every aspect of my life, both career-wise and in my personal life. 
Um, just one neck survivor reported not having mental health effects from their um, long-term complications of neck. Most survivors reported anxiety, uh, feelings of isolation, depression, um, with one sharing the emotional issues that I have faced from neck and SBS have left me feeling depressed and lonely. So moving over now to parents of neck survivors who are under the age of 18, um, we had 197 parent respondents, most were white from North America with children who were born prematurely and experienced um, surgical neck after 2010. So here's a really powerful quote from one of our neck parents. The long-term effects of neck control my son's life. The hospital is his second home. His development is severely impacted. He has daily GI pain. He can't eat by mouth. He's 100% TPN dependent and so much more. So 75% of neck parents reported not having adequate information regarding neck complications and long-term outcomes. 78% reported having to explain neck to others in order to advocate for their child with one uh, parent sharing, I need to explain neck to whoever cares for or watches my child. 26% reported that their child has body image anxiety, um, but we have to keep in mind that these are young children. Most are less than 10 years old, um, and a couple of respondents shared people make fun of his scar, and another shared uh, he hates being the small kid and has extensive abdominal scars that affect his self-image. So 72% of neck parents reported that their child has and struggles with long-term complications of neck with one parent sharing in every single way neck has completely changed her life. 54% uh, reported that their child has been re-hospitalized due to neck complications and 56% res reported that their child um, has needed additional surgery since leaving the NICU. Um, a couple of neck parents shared, my son has been hospitalized dozens of times since he was discharged from the NICU with another sharing. In the first 22 months since leaving the NICU, we only spent four weeks at home. 48% of parents reported that their child's neck complications has affected their child's overall quality of life. Uh, one parent shared feeding and digestive issues have been a total nightmare her entire life. 74% um, of neck parents reported that their own mental and physical health have been affected as a result of their child's long-term neck complications, um, with the most common effects being difficulty sleeping, anxiety, PTSD, and feelings of isolation. So I'd like to acknowledge some of the limitations of this work. Uh, as I mentioned, we do not have or know our response rate because the surveys were shared widely with the international net community and open to anyone uh, personally affected by the disease. Um, our sample is likely biased um, and does not perfectly reflect the NICU or neck community. Uh, families with surgical neck or more severe outcomes were uh, likely more likely to um, respond and to participate and even follow the next society. Um, finally, there there could be response bias in uh, the family's answers to our questions. But these limitations notwithstanding, we feel um, our findings are valuable and informative and demonstrate really the urgent need to develop resources um, that can help to improve communication um, and our understanding um, of these long-term outcomes. And uh, we hope that this will help to lead to um, an improved patient family experience. So in conclusion, we'd like you to know that neck affects survivors and their families' mental and physical health, their school experience, and their overall quality of life. Uh, neck affects survivors and their families years after their original neck diagnosis and after they have left the NICU. Um, neck survivors and their families need more resources and more information on the long-term outcomes of neck and tools to better cope with and manage um, the life impacts of neck. And finally, neck survivors and their families need healthcare providers who understand neck and its long-term complications so that patients can receive proper follow-up and care from infancy through adulthood. So I'd like to acknowledge and thank my dedicated co-authors, uh, PCORI, the many neck patients and families who made this work possible, as well as the Neck Society staff, council, board, and partners. And I'd also like to acknowledge my son, Micah, pictured here, who survived neck but then tragically died from the complications of the disease just before his first birthday. 
Thank you for the opportunity to share this work. You can learn more and stay in touch with us by visiting nextsociety.org. Thank you.